Hello everybody and welcome to Chess24 and welcome to my recap of the ninth game of the World Championships between Magnus Carlsen and Vichy Anand. Magnus with White today, we were hoping for a lot of action and quite unfortunately, especially for everybody following this match and neutral fans, we had a very, very quick draw, only 20 moves, a threefold repetition, a Good result for Vichy, really, with the black pieces, ha didn't have to defend against Magnus. But then again, as Magnus stated in the press conference after the match, he's half a point closer to the title, having, uh, of course, maintained his one-point advantage in the match, meaning that three games are left. Vichy has white tomorrow, and he's going to have to really push. He can't let his white advantage slip, really, uh, in the next couple of games, otherwise simply he's going to leave himself with a, a must-win scenario in the last game, which is uh, which is not ideal. He wants to really even up the match before then. So we'll see what happens. But today, not much to talk about. We'll go through the game. We saw a Berlin defence, a Berlin wall. Again, all the rage has been for years now. We've seen it in this match. Carlsen, we saw, actually won a game with the move D3 earlier in the match. But as he explained... In the press conference, the reason why he's choosing the Berlin endgame, which uh, happens, of course, after these very well-known moves, is because he feels that his uh, the risk of losing is is much less, and of course, the onus is on Vichy to try and score a whole point. That said, not being able to press with White has slightly disappointed him. Anyway, we've seen this position before, h3, king e8, knight c3, and h5. This was the uh, starting position of the game that lasted nearly, I believe it was nearly the world record for a world championship match, way over 100 moves. Carlsen pressing, pressing, pressing. Vichy defended excellently. We didn't see that today. In that game, uh, we saw the move bishop f4, but today we saw a move knight e2, which is... Um, Certainly not one of the most common moves. Magnus himself had actually played this previously in 2009 against the very strong Russian Grandmaster Yakovenko. And, uh, well, Vichy being Vichy and uh, being as well prepared as he is, expected this, had prepared for it, and was playing almost uh, without thinking here, played the move b6. Very logical move, looking to develop the bishop to either b7 or a6. The a6 diagonal, especially at the moment, is very tempting due to the pin. So Magnus played rook d1, very logical, and now after bishop a6 means he can move the knight. And he played the move knight f4. We were looking at knight d4, but it seems that after the simple knight takes knight, knight takes knight, and c5, that black gets a, go a good game. Because now, while well, the knight really only has one decent square to go to, it can't even go to c6, because after bishop b7, the knight is actually totally trapped on c6. Uh, knight f3 runs into bishop e2 and that's actually just better for black after he manages to take. So he only has one square, knight f5, but now the very nice move, bishop to e2, just uh, flicking this move in, attacking the rook, because now the rook doesn't really have a good square. For example, if it comes to d2, now the bishop retreats to c4 and it comes to e6 and the point is you dislocate the rook slightly from its uh, much more pleasant post on d1 now the rook is blocking in the bishop and after black plays bishop e6 on the next move he's got absolutely no problems at all so really nice bit of uh, prep there by vichy knight f4 was still in his notes though and he played the move bishop b7 here and it was an interesting moment i was getting very excited doing the spanish broadcast for chess 24 because i thought well we might see a bit of action it's at the position is absolutely dying uh, for the move e6, trying to blow open uh, the, the black king while it's trapped in the center. But unfortunately for Magnus fans, Vichy actually had this all prepared. He did play the move e6. Perhaps the move b3 was worthy of attention, just keeping some more tension in the position, not clarifying exactly what White's intentions were. The point of b3 is obviously to be able to come to b2 with the bishop, and then any sort of e6 break actually carries a lot more power. E6 straight away, though, ran into the very good move, bishop to d6, uh, forcing pawn takes pawn, king takes pawn. And again, around here, we were getting slightly excited. But actually, after knight g5 check, the very brave king to f6, uh, threatening to take the knight, is good enough. And Magnus thought here for a while, 
and realized that there was nothing else he could do but give the perpetual check. Um, knight into e6, for example, would be very bad because after rook a8, actually these knights aren't threatening anything and they're going to be lost. Uh, a very simple bishop c8 is, is a huge threat or even just rook takes e6. So Magnus repeated and uh, with this perpetual check and the game ended in a draw. Not really much more to say about it than that. Uh, Vichy certainly the happier of the two having drawn with black. Then again Magnus still does maintain his point advantage. Join us again tomorrow here on Chess24 at 1 o'clock Central European time in the language of your choice. Russian, English, German or Spanish will cover all of those for you. Vichy with white tomorrow. He's gonna, he said in the press conference today he's going to press. Let's hope for a much more exciting battle then. So until tomorrow, have a very good day.